I mean, it's also a great counter pick, but it would be hilarious. Okay, that's the Fiora locked in for Breed. We've got a spicy top lane to watch out for. And, uh, well... He's still in a really comfortable position. And it just means that BLG are kind of easily gearing up towards the later stages by picking this one secure in it early at only five minutes. Definitely a positive for them. Looking at that. Potentially contest this one, but it's going pretty fast. It might have to be a steal. Chieftain wants to go for it. No, just spray seeker in. And the fact that you do essentially get extra damage on the back of that movement speed on the Hecarim. Oh, here we go. Knock him onto Fofo in the... Whoa! Oh my God. Is this what you... speechless. Is this what you get from your most played champion being Rek'Sai? You just do more damage? Because I don't know, man. I didn't expect that much. Yeah, I don't know. Here we go. All in on the top side as well. New with a great ulti to dodge some of that damage. Staying underneath the tower. Breathe has to flash away. The shield comes in and New survives. Clearing away the minions. Now Weiwei has to take the tower, but he slowed one more tower shot with an auto from New. Weiwei will oh. survive, but New, that was beautiful. Navigated it so well. Dodged away from the charge from Weiwei and managed to buy enough time. The ult from the center comes in. And on the other side of the map, they'll, they'll slow down the threat of Assault from BLG, allow TT to continue trying to accrue advantages. But here's the trade-off, right? You've devoted so many resources to that bot side of the map. Breeze is able to pick up that tower top. They're also going to look towards the Herald. So a couple of the changes not coming in just yet. Is that Herald now going to be slammed down in this bottom side? That'll finish the tower off. That'll be the second tower of the game. To lean into that pure split push later on. But TT doing a pretty good job of answering now. They're actually looking for the dive. Oh, they're going straight under the tower onto New. This time no he cannot dodge the damage. He's just one shot. And immediately, watch how fast that tower goes down. Breathe. He doesn't even have that many items. It's not like he's scaled into this one yet. He's just one and it's bought so much time. Yes, they're probably gonna end up getting it here, but think how many times we've seen them push the wave up. Four members grouping, but the trade-off is Breathe is still in that side lane. He is still hammering down that tower. And that is the second tier He's two taken now by BLG. They're more than happy to trade a Cloud Drake for that easily any day of the week. And so now Breathe in those side lanes has so much space to work with later on. Right? TT have just got a sniff no, of what might be Lord. going on here, but it's on 3,000 already. Is BLG just going to burn through this one? Can they get the smite in time? The Baron goes down. And now we're talking about this, this trade for the Baron. Well, New actually had to TP towards the top side to try and contest the Baron. They didn't even get to contest, but New still used that teleport. Breathe has his available. So BLG can just pressure all day long with this Baron, but the worst case scenario for can take the rest of his team. He's going to get all in on the top side. Can he go for a 1v3? It doesn't look like it, as he is just shredded. And in the meantime, BLG have to make this worthwhile. They'll grab themselves a tier 2 in the mid lane. It's going to be a kill for a tier 2. I'm not ready for this. Uh, here we go. Dragon going to be started off as Weiwei charges towards the enemy. TT on the scene. New looking for a flank angle as is Breathe on the opposite side of the fight. The Dragon just in the midst of all of this. He has no idea what's going on. He's just the Dragon. He can't comprehend this. He's not even sure why they're not properly fighting. They're just toying with the idea of fighting. Yukal rejoins his team. Package available here as Weiwei goes in. It's the smite for Chieftain as he returns to the LPL. I'm coming on flanks, but the Pure Ed isn't exactly the biggest fan of joining. Oh. Well, I said I wanted them to go in. They've gone in. Southwind the target, but the shield keeps them alive for now. That will just be a TP channeled and a disengage. You know, it was almost exciting. That's about as exciting as oh. it gets, or is it? Because Doggo's making the plays. In they go. Flash forward from Doggo. But TT still surviving. Finally, Yukal goes down. And a shockwave to pull him back into the fray. Fofo with one onto new. Massive and fact in the success of BLG so far. And I think as a result, people were talking about where is Uzi, when is Uzi playing. BLG are feeling really cool. Stop cold. this one going the way of TT. They can't really afford to lose the soul. And immediately, Weiwei just starts the fight, takes a chunk of damage. They go back on the Drake and they take it. That was so beautifully coordinated by BLG. They knew they weren't going for the fight, Chieftain. Oh, he's saved by Southwind. Last possible second. Kicked out once again. The shield is keeping him alive. And Chieftain walks away, at least for the time being. It is a sacrifice for Southwind, though, as the rest of BLG trying to chase down the Rek'Sai. It's a double for Breathe. And it's 5 to 2. This massive Baron wave. But again, Doggo over on the other side can just shred through these towers, especially with the Calibrum and Crescendum. It's the perfect combo for sieging onto these towers. 
with the Baron minions. He's confident that he's to bottom side. The rest of the team can move top if they wish, or maybe just play around the mid lane instead. Oh my lord. As we're going to see Wei Wei just charge a pub. See you later, buddy. And that's surely going to be game. Yeah, didn't have the Tom Kent's there this time. Able to run down the center. Doesn't matter how many souls you have in that situation. And BLG just looking to close this one out pretty convincingly. TT still have four members to defend. But the gold advantage is so big right now. Yeah, I feel like we needed more Thunder Chad gameplay here. We did not get to see it. We got Wing speedy gold, pants. You know. Yeah, Wing speedy that's pants. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nailed it. Okay, here we go. Fear comes out. Both Southwind will save his life this time. The Gravitum is there, though. And Southwind once again sacrifices himself. Oh, Yukal goes what? in. <laughs> I mean, look, I respect it. He went in this That's time. He definitely Chad went gaming. in. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you're not wrong. That was definitely a Chad play. Uh, didn't work out for Yukal this time around. But, you know, maybe next time. Hey, maybe next time. This is going to be Towers going down. Chieftain goes in. There's a kill. Fofo, at the very least, is Puff just forced onto the way. Doggo is the king of the 80 carries in this game. Puff does not get a shoe in as the turret comes down onto the fountain. And that's going to be game. That's going to be BLG with a slow but sure win over TT. Yeah, I mean, we said BLG confident that they a no-brainer, but yeah, they're going to lock it in. So this is kind of the problem. All those jungle bans coming through. The trundle ban kind of forcing TT to take away Zin Zhao. And at the end of the day... Him. Chieftain is around. He smells a rat at this point. But wait, wait. We'll just get a little bit of damage back away from this one now that Chieftain has arrived. Uh, we'll just win the jungle trade. And is actually still confident to go for this one. Flashes straight in. Steadfast presence. They're looking for the kill on Nuba. The shield saves him. He takes the tower. Oh, he still goes down. The ignite. The he burn. The ignite. I can't believe they got that. You know what's a hilarious thing? Is <laughs> oh my goodness. What a what a player. What a player. Well, two and a half minutes till we get the next chief to flash. But for the time being, he doesn't, he doesn't need, need it. it. Doggo goes down. Chris does have a flash of his own, but the anchor will do the work for the time being. Heavy lifted there. Flash of his own. Trading even in summoners though, which is the flash for a flash. But either way. You can't survive. Uh, goes one. wide. It's going to be answered by another hook on the other side. Now Southwind low. Red and white for the Aphelios. His doggo tries to finish the kill, but Southwind out of range on this one. Flashing forward is Puff low on HP, but he just out DPS his doggo. And now Crisp is alone in the world. He'll get himself a kill onto Southwind. It's a consolation prize, though. That's bad news for BLG. And remember, this is fifth place versus 16th place. This is BLG. Oh, is 3 and 0. Has a pretty decent CS lead. The problem is, oh, might see a play here. Yeah, actually. let's let's hold this thought. Two plates go down. Doggo now caught by the package, and then the hex deck ultimatum. This will be a tower taken by Puff. BLG losing everywhere on the map. Who's this team? It's about the Mojo and TT <laughs> are channeling the Mojo right now. They certainly are, but oh, Weiwei's wait. channeling it harder as they come on in. The play does nothing. It looks real good, but that doesn't matter. Yukal's arrived with the TP, and Crisp will be answered. That is going to be the shutdown taken. It wasn't a the hex flash. That was <laughs> BLG commit. Oh, oh. Uh, mm. Mm. Two games. Oh, he's just destroying new. Now playing the bottom side. Hex flash on a ward. Weiwei just gets on. <laughs> Game two, I'll eat my hat. Uh, no, Breed's getting it for sure. But well, there's going to be two Drakes. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that was as positive of a play as you're saying, because he was just a millimeter away from that steadfast presence. And if you get knocked up by that, that was that the least sneaky hex flash I've ever seen. And I played the Dagger. Well, you know, I'm sure Dagger's trying, and Weiwei was trying there, and that's what's important, okay? Dagger's is very trying, so that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> good little dodge on the hook. Nicely done there. Good shockwave as well. But now the dive comes on through. What tower, says Chieftain. At least one tower for BLG. What can TT do to answer? They need to grab that tower as fast as possible in the bottom side. They need to get out of there as well. Doggo going to be hammering away in the mid lane. Yukal trying to finish this Herald off. It will go down. And that means the inhib will be safe. Yeah, uh, not weird. Shred health bars, but TT are the ones with position for the time being. I love that Southwood is just throwing his Q on cooldown. He's trying to find plays, but in with the steadfast presence, Weiwei starting it off, trying to split up the enemy team. The TT, they're just walking one by one. They're just taking down one by one. Make news super weak. 
south wind as a thresh just squishy and chieftain can't really do much in that situation great coordination from blg to force their way in and they're able to find a successful fight and get that third dragon and now things are starting to get a little bit scary to the side of tt just gonna just wait yeah. for that and then tt are forced to contest and play oh. against when or we just find a miraculous pick onto Southwind out of nowhere. And Wei slams him against the wall for a little bit of bonus damage. And that'll be a kill. Give it over to Fofo. So forget your two. timer in the top left. The logistics of the situation can be brute force by the weight of an anchor. Doggo behind Ooh. the plate. His Wei Wei flashes in once more. Doggo with the kill. And Chieftain left wondering what went wrong. Peeing off this game. And they can comfortably 2v1 the Baron as well. That'll be the objective taken. And that'll be, I'm guessing, about a 5k gold lead after the Baron's gone down as well. Drake coming up in 45 seconds, which means the reset is up power across the course of this game. A good shockwave could win the fight by itself. It's going to be a spy fight, though. We might actually just have a 50-50 on this one. Dragon will reset. Hook goes wide from Crisp. He's getting fairly low on HP as Chieftain goes in, knocked up, and two of them are just knocked away from the play. Chieftain will finally go down, and the Dragon Low taken out by Weiwei as Puff desperately tries to win the fight, but he's got a Gwen running at him. He's got to dodge everything, but actually the Thresh is there to save the day. So up again late. if it wasn't the third time this series, but it's <laughs> happened. <laughs> it has been pretty consistent. It's kind of impressive, honestly. <laughs> Uh, maybe he thinks he's playing Gwen and W will do something much nicer than it does. I don't know. Either way, Baron in, in uh, two lanes now as BLG will crack this base open and start to find themselves uh, a win in this series. If they can just finish things off neatly, that is. It's not quite over just yet. There is a Jinx, there is a Corky. Never quite over until the Nexus explodes, but it's looking pretty open in the grand scheme of things. And Wei Wei is not afraid to just spin that hammer. Doesn't throw it. Keeps the keeper's verdict for himself, but just, just showing it off. Showing off. This from Doggo, the Oriana shielding, definitely doing a lot to mitigate. And once again, TT looking for the Nautilus. Yeah, but Crisp is uh, actually looking for them because he's got an Oriana ball on his shoulder and he's got a win in his eyes. Two for Doggo. And there's a bonus one for Breathe at the end there as well. Five, zero, and two on the Gwen. And that is going to be all she wrote on this one. 14 to 8. A much quicker, a much more decisive game coming out from BLG. And I have to say, this poppy pick from Weiwei was an absolute pleasure to watch. The hex flashes from the best I've seen to the very worst across the game. <laughs> it was a smorgasbord of brilliance. Of the LPL, it probably felt like the win streak wasn't actually that long. Um, but unfortunately, it will end. TT still... But that one win in the pocket, but I think it's just a hard matchup. And I think it's not just the fact it's a hard matchup in terms of it's a much better team. Um, but also we talked a little bit coming into this about how often we see these teams both trying to lean to the later stages. And I feel like if you're facing a team with a, a similar sort of win con in how they play out games, but they're, you know, quite a bit stronger than you, it becomes very difficult. If you have a clash of styles, at least, then sometimes you can find that advantage in terms of strategy, but wasn't really to be be found here yeah bit of a difficult one for tt uh both stylistically and just pound for pound like people are talking about blg as a super team nobody's mentioned the tt super team just yet you know uh, yeah <laughs> when you think yet yet being the key <laughs> word there um, <laughs> but you know thunder chat gaming they had some pretty chad moments that is for sure so we can take that away chieftain that flash over the wall to gank top lane it didn't work but it was chat as hell, you know? And and that's what I'm here for. That's what we want, right? We want that energy, them willing to give a fight and not just back down. But, you know, unfortunately it wasn't enough, but there were positives, right? Puff and Southwind, once again, just doesn't matter who they face up against, they will try and find those 2v2 kills. And they were pretty successful in this game. I think my probably my biggest sore point was the new had a pretty rough series overall uh, on the Camille, but overall breathe is a very accomplished player at punishing that 1v1 matchup. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Breathe did a, a, an absurdly good job in the 1v1. Like he was, what, 60 CS up at 12 minutes or something absolutely insane. He demolished New in the top lane. But props to Puff and Southwind at the bottom lane. 
who actually did a really good job in the 2v2. I think that's one thing that it would be really easy to walk away from this series and say, oh, BLG 2-0, not even look at the scoreboard in that. But actually, in the laning phases, Puth and Southwind had a really, really good series for themselves, consistently finding 2v2 wins and finding advantages over Doggo and Crisp, which is not something you would expect. You know, remember when we used to have All-Stars and we used to have that event where it'd be like the 2v2 in the like the, the isolated 2v2 game mode where it'd be like in the Magma Core, whatever? Puff and Southwind were pretty good at that, right? If it was just about the yeah. lane battle, uh, they definitely can flourish there. But I think the problem is there's some points like in the mid game where we saw, you know, Southwind getting caught. We saw Puff getting caught in game one. I think they just need to sharpen up on that a little bit more, but definitely still showing uh, some of that, that talent they had when, from when they were on IG. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the hilarious thing is the other 2v2 that I would love to see in a Magma Chamber is like Jekyll of Bowlan. Give me the both of the XIG bot lanes, 2v2 Magma Chamber. I would I would pay to, I would pay good money to watch that series. That would be so much fun to watch. Why don't we get Magma Chamber? Why why we were promised Magma Chamber years ago? When's I don't know. it coming um, out? It was so good. It was so good. Especially as a Caitlyn main, that broke my heart that they cancelled the 1v1 game. <laughs> I mean, I think they just realized great. it just wouldn't be fun, right? Because it'd be fun at first, don't get me wrong, and it'd be exciting, but then you get to like a certain point where it would just be like every game is the same matchup and everyone just plays so sweaty and try hard. But uh, definitely, I feel like having a fun, fun map that people can choose, like I'd love to just play like a bit of 2v2 Magma. Me and you, Joe, 2v2 yeah, Magma Chamber. Man, would be would be world champions potentially, probably not, be but close. Think of the potential hex flash shenanigans, you know? Exactly. I would. We could do a little LPL caster tournament. The guys in America have to come 